morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and this is my Rokon Trailbreaker. I bought this Rokon bike not because I wanted to necessarily advertise for Rokon, but because I wanted something that would go places a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler would not go. I wanted something that would go through swampy territory, that would get in the back of the mires and the mucks of this area of the Appalachian woodlands. And I think the Rokon is capable of doing that. It's also capable of climbing a 60% grade, which is almost unheard of. This thing is like a tank on two wheels. It has lots and lots of features that we're going to talk about real quick in this introduction video because I'm going to do a series on my Rokon. Different things that I do to it to make it more adapted for what I want it for. And also any additions that I make to it as far as adding on accessories. But what I want to talk to you about first was the Rokon itself, some of the features of the Rokon, and then how it came to me when I first received it, because I think that's important. You would think that something like this might come in some type of kit form and be complicated to assemble. But to be honest with you, when it came to me, it was on a pallet with two straps through the frame that were all foamed and cardboarded over and protected. And the handlebars were really the only thing off the bike, and there were two nuts that hold those forks down or those handlebars down to the forks that you have to put in. One of the big conveniences of this bike for a self-reliance situation or from a self-reliance standpoint is that all of the bolts and nuts on this bike are American standard and there's only about three or four sizes of nuts on here. You've got like a 3 8 7 16 half inch 9 16 and I don't think there's anything any bigger than that on here that I've found so far. I haven't completely torn the bike down yet, but it comes with a very nice manual that shows you how to completely break it down. And guys that are really into Rokons can do it very, very quickly. So the maintenance of this thing is very easy. The tools that you need to maintain it are very limited. And like I said, once I unstrapped it from the pallet, put the handlebars on and bolted them down, all I really had to do was put gas and oil in it and it was ready to go. Now the one thing that I did find that they don't tell you, at least I didn't see it anywhere, it doesn't mean it doesn't say it, it just means I didn't see it, is that there's a fuse that comes in a plastic envelope with your manual and that electrical fuse gets put into a boot up here in the front of the electrical system and the bike won't start without that fuse. That closes your electrical system and I didn't realize that's the 30 amp flat wedge type fuse that you can buy at any hardware store or auto parts store. But you have to put that fuse in to get the electrical system to be engaged or connected and then you're ready to rock and roll from there it's as simple as driving the thing off the pallet and heading for the woods so it's a very easy setup when it comes to you it's almost completely taken care of like i said oil gas stick a fuse in it two bolts and handlebars off you go that part i really like the one thing that i worried about with this thing was the key and the key is it's a fairly standard looking key for any motorcycle, lawnmower, outboard, things like that, in that it's just a Christmas tree shaped key. I was kind of afraid that I might lose this key. I took one of the keys off, it comes with two, put one in a drawer at my house. I took the other one and put a loop of paracord through a key ring so that I could take it on the frame and loop it around the frame of the bike and then just half hitch it off so that there's no way that key could fall out and get misplaced on the trail somewhere if I were to stop for a few minutes or camp or anything like that or go over you know something rough it's there's no way it's going to bounce out there's no way it can get lost from the bike as long as it's half hitched on there like that and I think that's just a simple thing that you can do right off the bat to save yourself some headache in the long run okay so let's talk about a few more specifics of this bike and I'm going to read them right off a sheet that I printed off the internet so I don't miss anything, all right? Pretty simple stuff. But it'll answer a lot of questions that I'm gonna get asked in this video. The drive system is full-time front and rear wheel drive. So you have a two-wheel drive system that's engaged all the time. You have a Kohler single cycle, four-stroke fan-cooled engine, 208 cc's, seven horsepower output at 3,600 RPMs. The peak torque is 12.4 at 2,800 RPMs. And this thing has three gears that allow it to do up to 35 miles an hour. I see that's one of the things that I've heard a lot of people talk about Rokons are crawlers. They don't go anywhere. You can get anywhere you want to go, but at a very slow speed. 35 miles an hour is pretty fast 
in a dense woodland environment, especially here in eastern woodlands. If you need to go faster than 35, you better be on a cut trail, in which case, you know, a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side is probably a better option for you. If you're going off trail, you're not going to be doing 35 miles an hour, and this thing is the ticket for that because it will go anywhere off trail. Now, it has a, uh, we talked about the torque converter already. It has a power transmission, automatic torque converter, three gear range selector. First gear is zero to 10 miles an hour. Second gear, zero to 20. And third gear, zero to 35. So it has that torque converter in there so that you can't over rev the engine, depending on what gear you're in. But it has a first, second, and third gear. I drive it the majority of the time in second gear so far. And I've only put probably three hours on this thing so far. Seven horsepower uh, with a throttle. 2.69 U.S. gallons in the fuel tank, but it also has the capability to hold fuel in the rims of both tires or water. It's a sealed rim system that's made out of aluminum, and you have a little over two gallons of storage, if I remember right, in each one of those rims. You could make both of them water, both of them gas, one gas, one water, whatever your choice would be, but that's a great extra survival tool or emergency tool for you to have. It takes regular unleaded gas, uh, 0.33 gallons per hour is normal fuel consumption. It has a disc brake system, electric start that's sealed. So if you get it wet, it'll still start. It has an electronic magneto. It's a 12-volt system. It has a U.S. Forestry approved spark arrestor on the muffler system. It's a fixed main jet carburetor. Uh, grade capacity is 60% grade. It comes with a 12-month limited warranty. The wheels are 12-inch aluminum drums. Wheelbase is 51 inches. Ground clearance is 14 inches. Uh, height overall to the handlebars is 41 inches. I think that covers quite a bit of it. Um, the weight of this thing, dry weight with nothing in it as far as fuel or the tanks being full in the rims is 218 pounds. In all honesty... When you've got it engaged and it's climbing on its own or whatever, it's pretty simple. If you had to pick the thing up dead weight, it might be a little bit heavy, but it's nothing that you can't manage, nothing more than a normal dirt bike or something like that would weigh anyway. So I'm really happy with this Rokon so far. Like I said, I've only put three or four hours into it, probably driving it on trails and things like that, but I haven't found anywhere it wouldn't go, including off-trail situations. And the biggest problem I find with my four-wheeler and even with my side-by-side is the width of trail that you need or the width of clear trail that you need to be able to drive that thing. With this, that's much more condensed. You can weave this thing in and out between trees. It goes over the top of logs and things like that very, very easily. So right now, I'm real happy with it. The other thing that I did do, the immediate change that I made was it came with a yellow hose here, or a breathing hose for the fuel tank. I put a black uh, pole spear banding on here like a slingshot banding type material on here number one it's black number two it's less rigid number three it's multifunctional so i put that on there put that piece of paracord on the key ring and set that up to stay on the bike other than that i've made no changes to the original bike as it came to me on the pallet for those that are asking about the price of a rokon this thing lifts at about 7200 ish as you see it right now accessories not included uh, this one does have brush busters on the front end that do not come standard. But overall, you know, 7200 bucks is a lot of money. It's not common man by any means. It's well under the price of a Harley. It is commensurate with the price of a decent four-wheeler and a little bit under the price of a good side-by-side. So it's one of those in-between price things. If you're going to spend the money, you can find them used on eBay and places like that. Rokon has a Facebook page that has people selling them on there used all the time. I saw one for sale on there yesterday uh, used. I think it was an 80s model Rokon from, I think it was like 3700 bucks, something like that. But the thing with these Rokons is that I'm finding by doing research and looking at forums is people don't get rid of them very often. And when they do, it's just because it's a hobby thing where they buy used ones and they rebuild them and resell them. These things are mules. They go anywhere, they last forever, and they don't break down. And everybody that I found that ever owned one absolutely loved it.
gas shut off here. There's that yellow hose that I replaced here. It was the same yellow hose as this one. This is your shut off from the tank, just like any other small engine. You also have a choke and you have a gas shut off back here on the back side as well. Like chainsaws and things like that have on them and then your gear shift is right behind that. One of the things that I really like about this Rokon is it has a huge heavy duty kickstand on it. I mean, the thing is giant. So whenever you put this bike down, it's got a big solid foot on it. It's got a really long reach to hold up the weight of that bike. And I haven't put it anywhere yet that I put the kickstand down and it's even acted like it was gonna fall over. Now this Rokon also has a trailer hitch attached to it. And again, that is not a standard item. That is an add-on. So the trailer hitch and the brush busters that are on the front to keep your hands from getting ate up by thorns and things like that, those are extras that do not come on the bike standard. The fuel tank's nice and big, has a nice wide opening in it to pour gas into, so it's very, very simple to gas it up. I like that. ABS plastic tank, it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to rust out on you. I put that black hose on there, replaced the yellow when it was on there. Brush busters, you got front and rear brakes up here. Throttles over here. Again, there's no clutch. You have to be stopped to change gears. You got a first, second, and third gear, and then neutral in between every gear. That I like really well. And you also have an emergency kill button up here by your hands. Now this thing comes standard with a second seat back here for a passenger and a set of pegs here. But take this off and buy an add-on of a rack if you wanted to or I'm sure you could just take this seat off and put yourself a couple of milk crates back there you know it would be the very good common man solution for that I think I have a double milk crate actually back in my trapping building that I may put on here until I decide to buy the cage itself but I do like the fact that it's got areas you can attach saddlebags and things like that to it that are actually frame components as well as rifle scabbards and things like that if you choose Okay, guys, well, that was just a quick rundown of my Rokon Trail Breaker, the way I received it from the factory. A little bit of the features and specs of the bike itself. I'm going to be creating a series on the Rokon, talk about improvements that I may want to make, additions that I want to make, and actually testing this thing in, you know, different environments in the eastern woodlands, swamps, drainages, you know, higher areas of elevation, steeper grades, all those types of things, mud, sand. I want to give this thing a good run for its money because I want to know that my money was invested well so that if you decide to buy one of these, your money will be invested well too because it is a major undertaking or a major investment. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our business, for our family, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.